Hi, I'm Bob Powell with The Street, and today I'm talking with John Chauvin, a professor of economics at Stanford University, who, along with some other co-authors, has just published a paper on NBER called The Power of Working Longer. John, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So um, this study is quite interesting, and if, uh, if you could, could you hand, uh, hand walk us through the findings? So we... Uh we're looking at um, primary earners, the higher earner in a couple, and who, along with the spouse, were thinking of their um, long-term retirement plans, their life cycle plan, how much to save for retirement, uh, when to retire, when to start saving. Uh, and uh, we went through a case where somebody had a base plan, actually a pretty good base plan, where they were going to contribute 9% a year uh, to their to a 401k account, six of their own money, three by the employer. They were going to do that for 30 years and then retire at age 66. And uh, they looked at uh, the Social Security system, assuming that the Social Security system benefits stay as they are today. And when they looked at that plan, they were somewhat dissatisfied with how much they would be able to enjoy in retirement, their resources in retirement. Basically, the primary earner would have only 52% of their final wage rate replaced by Social Security and their retirement. So then the question was, what could they do about it? And there are two major things they could do about it, save more or work longer. And we wanted to know the relative power of those two choices. So we gave saving more its best shot. Uh, we said, what if you save 10% instead of 9%, but for a full 30 years, for a full 30 years, starting at age 36, you save an incremental 1% a year of your earnings for all 30 years. And what would that do for your standard of living that you could afford in retirement? And we got a number. Actually, it's a pretty modest number, uh, maybe 2.5% increase in uh, your standard of living. Then we asked, well, instead of doing that, what if you didn't save more, you just worked a little longer, how long, how much extra time would you have to work? When you say work a little longer, how much? And the answer was, at least in our first analysis, three months. We said, wow, you could either save more for 30 years or you could work three months longer. It seems like working longer is very powerful. That's why the title of the paper is The Power of Working Longer. And we went on to look at lots of cases, and in general, 30 years of saving 1% more would, would result in three to six months of work, the, the equivalent of three to six months longer uh, of working. Um, that's when you make the changes at 36. But what if at age 56 you decide, I don't have enough, I'm going to save 1% more for the last 10 years of my career? Well, that will have the same impact on your retirement standard of living as one month more of work. Literally, maybe let's say five weeks. Um, so it turns out that working longer is a very powerful way to improve your retirement uh, resources. And it seems more powerful uh, than saving more, at least for middle income uh, Americans. Um, one third example, and then we can ask other questions. What if you wanted to really improve your uh, standard of living in retirement that you could afford? Uh, you wanted 25% more money than in your base plan. Well, you can't do it by saving more, or not without saving just incredible amounts more. But working three years longer will do it. So in other words, retiring at 65 instead of 62, or 66 instead of 63, that'll get about 25% increase in your uh, affordable retirement standard of living. So once again, working longer seems very powerful in allowing you to have a higher standard of living in retirement. So that's our major uh, conclusion is that when you look at these two levers, saving more, working longer, extending your target date of retirement, it's the latter that seems like the more powerful uh, way to improve uh, your standard of living in retirement. Okay, so I, I would imagine that if someone in their 30s did both, tried to work longer and bumped up their savings by one percent, one percentage point, 
that that too would have dramatic effects? Sure. That, the, the effects would be basically additive. And so, say you just uh, worked one year longer and you saved 1% more for 30 years, that would increase your retirement standard of living by more than 10%. And it's not just for when you and your spouse are alive, but it's also when your surviving spouse is alive. That is, it's for both lifetimes. So a 10% increase um, in your standard of living every year, that's, that's not bad. That's for one extra year of work and one percentage point more. And it might even be 11%. It's between 10 and 11% that you'd get for that. Uh, that's per year. So I mean, if you, uh, uh, if you work more than one extra year longer, you'd get more than that. But you're right. Uh, saving more works. Uh, and so if you can do both, that's great. So um, it seems like in terms of actionable advice, obviously delaying retirement matters. In your paper, you talk about uh, also delaying Social Security as having a, a meaningful impact, too, on, on improving someone's uh, retirement lifestyle or standard of living in retirement. Absolutely. That is the key. Uh, what we've assumed in our work is that if you delay retirement, you simultaneously uh, don't collect your Social Security until you retire. So you're delaying Social Security. And that has a huge payoff. Um, so uh, a lot of what we're finding is uh, the power of deferring Social Security, if you like. And But we think many people, the only way they can afford to defer Social Security is to work longer. They don't necessarily have to work full time. They just have to uh, earn enough so that they can defer their Social Security. Right. And I think in your paper, you mentioned some of the reasons why that's so important to delay Social Security uh, and delay retirement, which include getting a larger Social Security benefit, uh, putting more money into your retirement account, uh, not withdrawing money from your retirement account for living expenses, and, uh, and of course, the, uh, uh, the delayed annuity purchase results in lower annuity prices if one does want right. to buy an annuity there's price. There's like four effects from uh, working longer and deferring Social Security. Uh, one effect is, and then you should just have them. You get more Social Security if you wait, if you start later. Uh, you make more contributions if you work longer. You get more compounding if you work longer, and then you can convert your money in your 401k account into a bigger annuitized monthly benefit uh, because you're taking that annuity decision at an older age. Older age annuities are cheaper than younger age annuities. Uh, so we put all four of these things working for you. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of extra work to begin to make a difference. You know, three months more work will increase uh, your um, standard of living as much as saving 1% more for 30 years. It's just three months. Um, but obviously, if you can afford a year or a year and a half of extra work, you can begin to really uh, improve uh, the standard of living that you'll enjoy for the rest of your life. And the rest of your life and your spouse's life, that could last for 25, 30 years. That's a long time to be uh, you know, better off. Um, so I would say, uh, this mostly applies to people that are thinking of retiring, say, uh, before uh, 66, and uh, saying if they worked a little longer, uh, maybe if they went from 64 to 66 or 65 to 66. It's also true, by the way, that if you are thinking of working at 68, well, if you work to 69, it's, it's going to pay off there too. Uh, but I'm not talking about working to incredibly old ages. This is not a story that uh, everybody should work till 75. Uh, that's just not the story at all. That's fair. So uh, when I was reading the report, one thing that sort of surprised me is the notion that the use of low-cost investments doesn't necessarily have a dramatic impact on uh, improving one's uh, standard of living, uh, especially if you start, I guess, late uh, in your mid-50s using low-cost funds. Right. If you could go from pretty um, average to high-cost funds to low-cost funds, um, that has the impact about the same as saving 1% more. Uh, but remember, saving 1% more at age 50, at your, for your last 10 years, that only was equivalent to working one month longer. Well, the same is true uh, if you go to all index funds from to all active funds, which had, let's say, one had a 70 basis point fee and one has a 10 basis point fee. That's going to help. Lower fees helps. But again, the, the story of the paper is 
working a little longer is very powerful. That's why it's called the power of working longer. So um, maybe, though, you can do all three. That is, save a little more, save more efficiently by having lower expenses, and work a little more, and you could, you could really impact uh, your retirement standard of living. Uh, the sooner you do those things in your work career, the better. It, you know, it's more powerful to make those decisions at 36 than it is at 46, and it's more powerful at 46 than it is at 56. So you want to, um, if you're going to save more, you want to save more for a long time. If you want to have cheap expenses on your in your investments, it's good if you have those for a long time. But um, the thing that we think was underappreciated is how much it would help to work just a little bit longer. Yeah. So that sounds like the big surprise for you in the study, that, that, that dramatic effect. Were there any other surprises bes- besides that that sort of... I don't think so. That was, that was really the surprise. And, and uh, I think you know, and but I'll tell all of our listeners, you know, kind of what the story is. When you retire, typically, a uh, typical American will depend on two things, Social Security and, and the withdrawals that they make from their accumulated 401k or similar retirement plan. So they've got two sources of income, their Social Security checks and, their, and, and the withdrawals. Um, if you save more, yeah, you can expand the withdrawals, but it doesn't expand Social Security. And Social Security is a big chunk of your income, and it's not growing. Uh, if all you do is save more. On the other hand, if you work longer, both your 401k withdrawal subsequently once you do retire and your social security will be higher. So you're hitting on two cylinders instead of hitting on one cylinder. And it turns out that the big cylinder is social security and the little cylinder is your 401k withdrawals. You want to increase them both. And the only way to do that is to work longer and defer Social Security for that little extra time. When I say little, I'm talking three months, six months, one year, two years, three years. And, you know, it depends, you know, how terrible work is for you and, and how much you just like it. Uh, but any of those adjustments will help, and the bigger ones help more than the smaller ones. All right. So in the study, you assumed low wage growth and low real interest rates, but given the possibility, as we experienced um, in today's report, that there's higher wage growth and the possibility of higher interest, higher, higher real interest rates may be in the uh, in the offing. Uh, any thoughts about how that might change the uh, results of the study if, if you were to change the, the assumptions around wage growth and interest rates? Yes. Uh, I would say not dramatically. That is, the results are not going to change dramatically. Obviously, saving more works better in a high in a world of high investment returns than low investment returns. But that three month number that we got, the 30 years of savings, this extra three months of work, if you had a high return economy, that three months might be six months. Mm-hmm. It could be as much as six months. But still, it's just a matter of a few months of extra work would be equivalent to saving 1% more. Uh, the wage growth, uh, again, I don't think that's going to be a major. Uh, change those results in a major way. Um, uh, it just turns out that um, uh, every month that you uh, delay Social Security and work longer uh, helped. Uh, people should know that Social Security, when they uh, determine the size of your check, they check your age, not to the year, but right to the month. So somebody who is 63 and four months old gets less than somebody who is 63 and five months old. Um, and so it, it's pretty, it, they, they, they check your age on a fine grain basis. And you, you were right when you said that maybe deferring social security is a big part of the deal, and it is. Right. So also in the real world, it's quite possible that someone might not just bump up their savings, their deferral rate by 1% more of their salary, but they might maybe increase it uh, over time from say, one percent, or or go from nine percent to ten percent to eleven to twelve. It, it may not, maybe it doesn't pan out in reality. But any thoughts about how that might change the results if, if someone didn't well, just sure. use a static? Yeah, that would help the relative power of savings. If if you can save, let's say you start off saving one percent more, and then you switch to two, and then you switch to three, so you're going from nine to ten to eleven, or or ten to eleven and twelve. Yeah, that'll help, and that could double. Um, the power of savings, and uh, so suddenly that saving strategy 
might work, be equivalent to working not three months longer, but six months or maybe six months to a year longer. So yeah, if you're willing to save um, uh, 10, 11, 12, that pattern, uh, that will help uh, more dramatically than just going from nine to 10. Um, so yeah, if you can do it, uh, a substantial increase in savings would help, but I still think you would want to accompany that. Once you realize the power of working longer, you might want to revisit your target retirement date. Uh, and you know, say your target retirement date had been 64, and you decide, well, you know, I think I could live with 65. That's going to help a lot. Uh, and uh, so that's what I'm suggesting people consider uh, is incrementally increasing their target retirement age. Okay. So two last questions. One is um, working longer sounds good on paper, but the folks at the Employee Benefit Research Institute have consistently yep. found that a large percentage of, of workers leave the workforce earlier than planned, in, including in their uh, 2017 Retirement Confidence Survey, about half of uh, workers uh, left the workforce earlier than planned due to things like hardships, uh, health problems, disability, downsizing, caring for a spouse, et cetera, et cetera. So any thoughts about like what the backup plan to that plan might be if, uh, if you can't work longer? Well, uh, let me just say one thing about that, which is I tend to agree with their study, and our results uh, might only apply to half the population. On the other hand, half the population is still a lot of people. So I do think it, it, the results apply to a lot of people. Now, say uh, your retirement age is no longer a choice, as you're suggesting. For some people, for whatever events that happen, they're forced to retire at, let's say, 63. Maybe it's health, maybe it's they lose their job. Uh, and now uh, what can they do? Well, the truth is at 63, they can do very little about it, about increasing their resources. Uh, but if they knew that was a risk, uh, then I do think that uh, that's, a, that's a case for sa saving more. Right. Uh, that is, they would be better off in that eventuality if they had been saving 10 or 11 instead of nine. Um, so uh, we're not, we certainly are not suggesting uh, that people are saving too much or that they shouldn't save more, uh, but we're saying if you can, working longer uh, could really change your retirement standard of living rather dramatically. Um, but I think you're suggesting we have to say if you can, because not everybody can. Right. Any other closing thoughts? No, not really. I mean, I, I do think uh, may, maybe one uh, thought is if you were to seek advice, uh, financial advice about retirement, um, your advisor should help you not only uh, with how to invest your, your IRA or 401k account, but they should help you sort through the rules of Social Security and they should help you uh, figure out the consequences of retiring at different ages. Uh, for instance, you come in, you say, I'm thinking of retiring at 64. They should say, well, that's fine, but let's just look what would happen if you retired at 65. Uh, you know, so you can compare the two cases. So I think what we need is kind of holistic retirement advice and not just financial investment advice um, because your biggest asset in retirement is often Social Security, and using that correctly is really important. If your financial advisor doesn't help you with that, then they haven't done the whole job. Well, it seems that uh, when, when what you're espousing in some ways is that financial planners in, embrace the the life cycle um, uh, saving and investing model that that right that there's a, an element of human capital, social capital, financial capital that all needs to be factored into someone's retirement income plan. I think that I, I would uh, I, I wouldn't fight that, that that as a description of what I'm trying to do. Um, I'm, I'm tr I, I want holistic advice, and I want um, I want people to recognize that uh, their biggest asset may be Social Security, and they uh, there are choices about it, including most importantly when to start it, when to commence it. 
And uh, the reason I'm getting working longer so much power is so powerful is that it is a means of delaying the start of Social Security. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I do think uh, uh, a financial advisor, or particularly if they're a retirement advisor, they need to uh, give you the whole picture and not just the, the part, um, not just the, you know, how to maximize your IRA or 401k account, but how about maximizing your retirement standard of living? That's yeah. what we were trying to do. Yeah, well, that, that may call for advisors to change the way they do things, but, but that's not a bad thing. <laughs> that's not a bad thing. And by the way, uh, Social Security is not simple, so this would, uh, I think it's hard to do this by yourself, so financial advisors would be doing a great service if they got on top of the fairly complicated Social Security system, as well as knowing uh, investment opportunities. All right. Uh, Thank you, John. My guest has been John Chauvin, professor of economics at Stanford University and co-author of a paper called The Power of Working Longer, just published on NBER. Thank you, John, for joining us. Okay, thank you.